Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Spin Cycle podcast, podcast talking to the personalities, the groups and the brands that make London and the UK an incredible place to be a cyclist. Uh, today, we've got uh, two special guests. We've got uh, Ben and Rome from Alter Cycling. Um, we came across uh, Alter from Ben himself, uh, reached out to us and they're a really great brand and we have some of their kit and I've recommended it to a lot of people I know as well. So we thought it was really great to get Ben and Ryan on the podcast, have a conversation about Alter, have a conversation about their plans and where they sit with uh, white bib shots, obviously. So <laughs> Ben, Ryan, um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. So our you know, valued listeners will know we typically break the podcast into three component parts, right? So it's who are you, how are you going to cycling? The second part is kind of, you know, tell us about your thing. So we're going to hear uh, a lot about Alter, where they came from, uh, where they've been and, and where they're going. And the uh, third part is going to be our, our Q&A. So kind of kicking off section one, Ben, maybe we start with you, mate. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you first got into cycling? Yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks for having us again. Um, yeah, I guess, like anyone, cycling's always been there for me. Um, I uh, I remember, you know, yeah, when I was sort of 15, 16, I was, uh, used to go into the local bike shop, looking at the old Muddy Foxes and the old Marin bikes that they used to have there in the local shop. Um, ended up working into, in, a, in another bike shop uh, for a little bit, uh, but it was like a bike skateboard shop so um yeah i kind of got hooked on skateboarding if, if i'm honest so i i spent my 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 misled youth as they say um skateboarding most of my time the bikes have always been there in the background you know i've a commute in um got into fixed gear bikes as well um probably around uh 2010 2012 Got into a bit of six gear riding, which was, which for me, um, I, it kind of felt like a bit like skating in a way. So, um, you know, just not not having brakes, just controlling the bike through your pedals, and you know, zooming through London and East London on the bike. So, um, yeah, that was that was really really fun. So, yeah, I had I had six gear bikes most of the time I was I was growing up. Um, and yeah, moved to Australia. So when I went to Australia, I lived there for, for 10 years, um, and decided to build another fixed gear bike. I'd, I'd sold everything, um, before, before leaving for Australia mm. and, um, yeah, built a bike from scratch, which is, which is like a little project to myself. Um, it, which was fun. I built like this, uh, this Chinelli work, uh, mash work, I think it was called. Um, yeah. Had a uh, H plus Sun wheels, um, SRAM crank set, uh, Philwood hubs, and yeah, it was like proper, proper good. I uh, really like enjoyed, you know, researching the fit gear scene, and you know, I really like sort of, I really like subcultures. Um, mm -hmm. Really, it really, it, it really interests me, you know, how subcultures are formed, and you know the you know, the, the fashion that they, they, they go through, you know, from skateboarding, um, you know, fashion, um, you know, gen general fashion, like there's, there's a subculture in New York called, um, low life. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but it's just, they're, they're kind of like the, the whole subculture revolves around, uh, like hip hop and, um, Ralph Lauren. So they all wear Ralph Lauren across, across, across New York and they've got this whole little scene going on and, you know, things like uh, skateboarding and fixed gear, fixed gear riding kind of had that and it appealed to me. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, kind of, kind of got into that and, um, built a bike, decided to, you know, start riding more and more and more once the bike was built. Um, I was living in Melbourne at the time, uh, which, are, which is, this is where I met Rowan actually. Um, I, before I'd met Rowan, I, you know, I was doing longer rides. Uh, I think I did like a, Melbourne's on like a bay. Um, and I, I, you know, I rode like 130 kilometers on the fixed gear around this bay. Um, and my knees started to get more and more sort of 
exhausted and you know um <laughs> yeah. i started getting pains in my knees from from riding i'm not getting any younger as well so that's probably, <laughs> probably got a, you know a, a bit to do with it so um uh i decided to, to get a road bike you know i was doing longer rides um so i got a, i got a road bike in 2018 so i'm still quite new to to the road bike scene um but you know um met a few people um in Melbourne that, that, that rode. Um, and again, you know, quite interesting sort of the subcultures and how, how they develop and what, you know, what sort of things go into the subculture and what makes them. Um, and yeah, started to get into, you know, riding road bikes. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, a road, there's a road that goes from like the city all the way down to one of the peninsulas beach road. So that ended up being quite a, quite a regular road. I used to, to ride along um and the first time i met rowan actually we went on a uh i think it was like 240 kilometers Ooh. we did um yeah i was punching in yeah I, yeah i was definitely not not really <laughs> equipped for it to be honest with you. i hadn't been riding that long um, <laughs> so that's 240k on the fixed gear no no that was that was on the oh. that was on the road bike okay but uh it was hard work um, at the end of it, I remember sitting down. I think we we stopped at a gas station, didn't we, Rowan? And uh, I had like this salt just covering my jersey. Um, I, I felt like I'd taken some sort of like, you know, LSD or something. Like I was just like melting into the floor. <laughs> you know, I was just I was full so bunk. dehydrated. And I'm full on, full on bunk. I was so dehydrated, it's unbelievable. Um, I managed to get home. Yeah. It turned white, didn't it? It was like yeah. it was just literally white. It was um yeah. I hadn't fueled properly. You know, I was I was with the pros obviously, um what I knew what I was doing. <laughs> but, uh yeah, that was that was kind of like my, my biggest ride I'd done. Um but uh, you know as you all know, you know, you kind of you do these big rides and you kinda of push yourself a little bit and it's just like Yeah, it's just like, like that gateway drug, isn't it? You just kinda of like end up wanting more and kind of wanting to do more mm. and push yourself a bit more. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I got into riding really. And, uh, moved back, moved back to the UK after being in, um, in Australia for 10 years. And, uh, yeah, um, started, started to ride here. Well, continue riding here. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a different experience riding in the UK, I must admit, <laughs> you know, um, mm. But uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been good, and um, yeah, that's kind of like my my relationship with riding. Yeah, how long have you been back in the UK then? Uh, well, since COVID, so I came back uh, just just as COVID hit, landed probably two or three days before lockdown. Oh, uh, that was, that <laughs> really? was always yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was always the plan to come back, but uh, it wasn't meant to go down like that. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, it was uh, it was bizarre, but it was it was it was good. I mean, if I, I think you know, a lot of things come out of COVID. Or, you know, there are a lot of bad things that come out of COVID, but a lot of good things as well. And you know, I guess we wouldn't we wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't wasn't for COVID. You know, um, that's where yeah, some of some of the creative juices started to to flow. And uh, yeah, it was um, this is why we're sitting here, I guess. Fair. And I mean, so Rowan, how about you? How to tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into cycling? Yeah, a little bit different. It was, um, I guess, staying up late on a Saturday, Friday night and um, putting on the Tour de France from a young age. Um, mm. And it was, it was more so about watching the scenery than anything to begin with and just seeing these massive mountains and um, these beautiful landscapes and, and I guess – getting in awe of that and then finally when you you know get a little bit older you um start to appreciate the actual cycling aspect of things and then started to follow that um so uh, yeah i guess from i don't know grade six so it would have been probably 12 years old probably got into mm -hmm. it um and then i've always rode like road bmx's rode like mountain bikes and um sort of like road to school and things like that but um yeah it probably wasn't until maybe 18 i got my first roadie and then sort of fell in love with that um you know 
trying to be someone a little bit different in terms of like wearing kit. So like I, I remember rocking like the all all black Adidas with like the white stripes on the sides, you know, trying to <laughs> nice. trying to change it up a little bit and not try and be like um, from, yeah, back then it was usually people would just wear like team kit that were on the tour or something. So you see like Case Depan or like CSC Saxo Bank or like, yeah, mm. that's all you'd really around at that time like raffle wasn't really a big thing in australia yet it was still very early yeah. um mm-hmm. so yeah that was sort of my coming up and sort of how i got into cycling nice mm. nice so how mean, did you do uh... oh go go oh uh, you as ben mentioned that he went on a ride and that's how you met so how did you both what was this ride that you both met on so the ride was um we had a maid that worked to the bike shop so we all just like met through that and then um yeah. there's this race that goes around the bay in, in melbourne um it goes to like geelong and then around and it's called around the bay in a day and they usually like block the whole roads off and it's like a charity thing um you ride over like highways and stuff so like they have to like block yeah. off you know do all that but we sort of did it on a day where it was like, it wasn't the actual charity ride day. We just like, for some reason, we're just like, oh, what do you reckon? We just see how far we can go and see if we can do round the the day. But, so we did that. It was like, I don't know, it was probably oh, five to 10 different pit stops. You'd have to catch a ferry. Um, lots That's of- the ferry's the worst part about it, I think, wasn't it? Because you're like, you do half of it and you're stopping for like, I don't know, like an hour waiting on the ferry to cross the, like, yeah. the peninsula. And yeah. then yeah. Uh, then you've got to start again. So like, you know, that's, Cafe Legs is an understatement. Like, you know, you yeah. just started again. <laughs> like, <laughs> ferry Legs. Yeah. It was a pretty amazing yeah, day, Ferry Legs. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess... We the tailwind that way, didn't we? Yeah, ridiculously, the tailwind followed us, which was absolutely crazy to think that's a dream like, day yeah right. yeah exactly um, <laughs> seven in the morning got home at about yeah i reckon i got home at about seven at night and then ben was a bit longer because he he lived a bit further out of the city so yeah it was a big one did you um yeah limp time we've, we've, got, <laughs> we've, we've got a friend of ours big tom swallow who who's moved to <laughs> melbourne and he yep. tells us of the uh and i've seen it on uh, youtube instagram things like that right um cycling maven used to go to it as well the 5 a.m 300 man peloton going over like four lane highways it's just and but also doing 40k an hour chop yeah. sesh yeah. did you yeah. ever get involved in that can you because people in london will you know think maybe the 6 a.m regents uh <laughs> speed sessions are a thing but the the melbourne 4 30 5 a.m club is is like a whole different thing right like it's a proper thing yeah yeah it's a um they call it the hell ride and it goes it goes probably at 5 a.m every saturday morning and it's like straight down beach road as far as you can go to um I think it's like they turn around at Frankston or something, but it's just yeah, full just gas. past Frankston, I think yeah, yeah, full gas until you get there, and it's um yeah, like don't stop at any reds, um yeah, punch it as hard as you can on the front. Um, I remember I had a mate that actually used to do it, and um, I think Luke Luke Plapp was on the front like one day, and it was just like. <laughs> 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 Players, and I was like, oh, yeah, I think that guy's going to go pro. And, and he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, I, I was never really um, a bit more into my leisurely rides. So mm. it was either, like, too early in the morning, too fast, um, too competitive. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, and, I mean, as well, I think maybe it's a thing specific to – Australian design culture, especially around cycling, is that a lot of it comes from that uh, skateboarding and BMXing side, right? I think in the UK, cycling was always your dad's sport. And, you know, 
it, it, it kind of evolved from there, but maybe because of the weather or because of the culture, the, the Australian scene became more from a, a cycling space and a, and a skateboarding space, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think the, the Australian scenes, yes, it's, it's definitely, yes, yeah, different to the UK, like experiencing both myself. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the weather plays a big part in it, right? Um, and uh, the roads are, they're, they're a lot wider and, you know, there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot more sort of space to kind of do what you want, like the hell ride, you know, they just go hell for leather and, yeah, rip each other's <laughs> legs off pretty much. But, um, and, yeah, it's definitely, a, he's got his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely has a, a different, yeah, feel to it. Like you said, you know, uh, I think the U- UK, it's, it feels a lot more traditional. You know, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, maybe what we do here is we fast forward and hear about how Ultra was started and, and what you guys have been doing since its inception. Thanks, guys. Welcome back, everyone. So, Ben, how did Ulta start? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, look, uh, I guess, like I said, you know, I was I was in Australia for ten years. You know, got into got into you know riding road, and um, yeah, came back to back to the UK. I'd always I'd always wanted to do something, uh, not necessarily in in, in cycling, but uh, always went to you know, do something creative, um, you know, clothing brands, uh, escape brand. You know, I, I grew up, like I said, my, 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 my youth grew up, I grew up skateboarding South bank, um, around London. Mm. A lot of my, a lot of my friends, uh, that I grew up skating with, um, you know, I've got some, you know, I've done really well, you know, uh, there's, there's, um, created brands like, uh, you know, like palace and, and uh yard sale and, and, and some of the some of the sort of streetwear brands that you see out there and I, you know i always kind of wanted to do something like that but never i guess never really um i don't know it ne- never felt like the time to do it and you know covid hit um everyone you know during covid sort of started to reevaluate <laughs> you know what they're doing with life and you know when they're sitting indoors and not being able to see anyone so um, yeah, kind of thought. Look, I want to. I want to try and do something. You know, I enjoy. I enjoy cycling. Um, there's there, there was a big portion of cycling that that I didn't really, really identify with. You know, yeah. um, coming from sort of the skateboard background. Um, you know, I, I enjoy skateboarding. Uh, I, I did, you know I used to do graffiti as well. Um, in my misled youth. Um, <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't tell my mum. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so like, you know, I kind of really didn't identify with some of the brands that are out there. Um, you know, th- th- you know, there's obviously brands that really paved the way for, for, for you know, the scenes that we have now. Uh, Rafa being one of the, you know, mm-hmm. big standout brands. But it didn't really identify with me. And, you know, I, you know, I own Rafa kit, um, but... Uh, I wanted, I wanted more. I wanted something a bit more creative. Um, so I thought, let's, 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 let's see what we can do, you know? And, um, I started it with a, a couple of, a couple of friends originally. Um, they, um, since moved on, um, you know, life gets in the way. And, uh, that was around 2021, uh, July 2021. Um, the, the kind of, you know, the project started. So it's been, it's been a long time sort of coming, you know, it's going through the motions of trying to start a brand from, from the ground up. Um, it's, uh, it's been challenging. Um, I always wanted to, to get Rowan involved. Um, Rowan, um, met Rowan in Melbourne, obviously. And, uh, you know, he, he done a lot, a lot of design. He, and he, he, you know, Rowan came from the, the cycling industry as well. So, um, reached out to Rowan. Uh, he'd kind of just, changed jobs hadn't you i think rowan and uh um yeah was keen to kind of get involved so um we yeah we went through the whole process of um you know talking about kit 
you know what what do we like um you know we're we're, quite, we're kind of interested in in the same things myself and Rowan and you know both enjoy music mm. um so uh and electronic music as well so you know coming from London myself I, again I spent a lot of time in clubs and you know listening to drum and bass and going to fabric every Friday night yeah. um <laughs> I don't do that now <laughs> if you want to get out for a ride you can't go to fabric in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, before, yeah yeah so. <laughs> Um, so yeah, kind of, um, wanted to, to kind of incorporate, you know, that, that sort of, that, those sorts of things, all the subcultures that I, were, I was involved in as well. I wanted to kind of incorporate that into, into, you know, what we were building as well. So, um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a journey. Um, it's definitely been interesting. Uh, we, we launched, we, we, we officially launched our website in November 22. Um, so we first, first launched with, uh, just casual clothing. Um, so what I wanted to do is kind of really create a brand that had kind of a, a streetwear skate aesthetic, um, that kind of lent on those sort of subcultures. Um, so that it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, solely technical cycling apparel, but we want, that's what we want to do is technical cycling apparel. But, um, you know, we also want to offer, you know, a good sort of sweep of, you know, uh, other, other, other items like, like t-shirts and, you know, eventually down the line sort of hoodies and, you know, all those other things that you kind of get with yeah. a, with a streetwear brand. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of, that kind of our, our thought behind it. And, um, we, we launched our first kit, uh, July 23. So last year, which was, which was good. We got received very well. So, um, pretty happy with how cool. things came out. We, uh, yeah, yeah, we went through the whole sort of design process, and I'll, I'll, I'll let Rowan talk talk about that more. But um, it was, uh, yeah, it was. We had so many different concepts coming out, and as, as you can imagine, and yeah, um, we we landed on something that we we really we really enjoyed and really liked, and um, yeah, I'm happy that, that we actually made the step and and, and, and you know created a brand from from the from the floor up. Mm. That's great. That's great. And so Rowan, how did you build the visual identity of the Ulta brand? Um, I guess it was based on our similar interests between Ben and I, like whether it was um rave culture, Ben has the in- um previous experience with skateboarding, graffiti um i've got a graphic design background so we wanted to sort of mesh all those things together and um bring it into something that we can put onto a kit and i think we we're really big on for, with our first drop that we didn't really want to do what everyone else is doing um and we didn't want to be known as another cycling brand that was just let's do one block color let's put a logo on it and then bang let's see if it sells because we know it's going to sell um, and it's what basically everyone, everyone else is doing at the moment anyway. Um, mm. So we wanted to do something a lot different, um, you know, have some warped graphics, have some sort of like play off the whole sort of like rave scene. Um, I guess we sort of want to have that in the background as sort of like a bit of our ethos. Like um, we want to continue doing some wild jerseys and, you um, keep going down that route so then you know we sort of get a following um like that rather than just doing the easy i guess um so yeah that's how the uh quantum kit sort of came came to hand after probably like i don't know a couple of months of ben and i going back and forth doing some real crazy shit um (laughs) and maybe some of it was crazy like yeah. Do we do we need to pare it back a little bit? So I think like what we what we did finally come out with was something a bit more pared back than where we initially started. Um, yeah, yeah, because you you mentioned that you you pared it back. To me, I was like, I guess to quite a lot of people, they probably still think it's quite crazy. So how <laughs> how more crazy was it? Oh yeah, it was oh, pretty full on. Was... Some of the some of the <laughs> designs are yeah. But but cool, like you know, they they're all like pretty, 
pretty colourful and, you know, we wanted to really just kind of, yeah, like Ryan said, kind of express kind of our, what the sort of things what we were into and um, kind of put that into a jersey. Um, but yeah, I think uh, there were some really out there ones, but what we landed on, as, as Ryan said, was kind of pared back, but it still had that, that feel to it, you know? Yeah, yeah it, was still, it was still like you will, if, if you rode past, you could still catch, catch yeah. someone's with it it wasn't um it wasn't lost in the crowd i guess yeah yeah so with the i guess the quantum race jersey range you i guess you speak about the love of rave culture and the aesthetic surroundings and i guess with everything that you've 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 sort of also said um how i guess what elements would you say are like the rave part of the jersey and what parts are like the skate parts and the subcultural parts would you say um, well, go on, go on, mind you. <laughs> yeah, I guess like maybe like you know warped shapes and um, things like that, like that we have in the background of the jersey that are created like this um, almost trippiness to to the jersey, and then um, I sort of see it some some ways like it's sort of like a bit like a skate deck. Hey, you have like a pretty like crazy background, but you might have um, you know a sticker slapped on front, which would be our logo, um, which sort of like brings it all together, sort of thing. Um, and then like little hits hits on the shoulders, hits on the arms that are like just again like little sort of symbols or um, different little aspects like that that sort of like. Um, tie it all together yeah i like how the designs you put in aren't symmetrical so on like one sleeve's blue one sleeve's purple that warping you've kind of got but it's not like a it's like a the I, would you, uh, is it purple would you say or is it more like a maroon color sort of has that nice subtlety with the, the black and then you kind of got the alter logo in white on it as well and then you've got alter and it's nice like on the back plate as well, which is quite nice with the, I guess, graphical elements as well, which I really, really, really like. Yeah. In terms of, I guess, oh, you go, you go, Red. Oh, sorry. I think like a little like um, sort of like hidden thing on the back as well. It has like the kind of where, where we started. So we've got like the coordinates of Melbourne on the back and then we have the coordinates of London on the back and it's yeah. sort of a nice little homage to our, um, cool. where we started from. Um, not a, not a lot of people would probably pick that up, but it was a nice little thing for our first jersey, I thought, to, like, I don't know, show where we're from and how we started. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's what we want to take, yeah. uh, like, aspects of, you know, London and, 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 and its culture and its, I mean, London's a melting pot, you know, for, for fashion, art, but, you know, Melbourne's got, you know, all of that as well, you know, and uh, I think it's a good good you know, combination, you know, we can collaborate with, you know, bringing both, both aspects from both cities into, into whatever we're developing. I think it's, it, it helps with the brand aesthetic, you know, um, mm -hmm. Melbourne, Melbourne and Australia's got, you know, some, some great culture and, and, and the UK and, and London again has, has amazing, amazing culture. So it's, it's good to, to, to tie both of those in and to whatever we're doing. Yeah, I also like on the the bib shorts that you've got design on the like the back of the bibs as well. Not, which I guess kind of fits in with the I guess the jersey. Also, where did the cycling club club come from? Is it with like a like spelt P S Y C H Ling Club? Is that to do with like raving and psychedelics and all that stuff? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> just like a little play on. <laughs> yeah. Ben and, I, ben and I have both doubled in that sort of uh, in our past. And um, <laughs> yeah, thought that, um, I don't know, it was a lot, nice little play in words. Um, <laughs> cycling, you know, sort of came came in with like sort of the rave jersey um, to start things. So, um, yeah. Perfect. What kind of, uh, I guess, cut would you say all the, the jersey and the shorts are for people uh, thinking about buying the kit? Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a race cut. So, um, 
uh, like I said, you know, said before uh, we jumped into this, of you know, I've got a bit of timber around me at the moment, so <laughs> I'm having to go a size up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a race car. That's kind of what we wanted to to have, you know, just a a sleek looking kit. Um, yeah, I just think it looks nicer to be honest. Um, when I'm in mm. good shape, which is not often, <laughs> um, I uh, yeah, I like wearing you know a sleek kit and you know yeah, look, looking fast basically. So I'm not really into kind of that, that baggy kit. Uh, I mean, there's a place for it definitely, and um, but definitely fast looking kit is the definitely catches my eye. Yeah, yeah, it's. Looks super nice and super, I guess, quite unique. Uh, I, I guess I, for me, I would say that I guess the unique selling point of the the brand is, I guess, all the, I guess, the sort of elements that we've just spoken about of like the rave, yeah. skating, and subculture. Is that, I guess, what your what when you're building sort of alter? That's the main sort of unique selling point of what you wanted the, I guess, the kit and maybe the like the lifestyle. Yeah, merch definitely. To yeah for sure i think uh yeah you know what we want to put into the brand is you know is our experiences um and what we you know where we've come from and you know i speak to a lot of uh you know a lot of guys that i know uh ex-skateboarders uh picked up the bike and they're all you know they're all riding r- riding road bikes now and you know and as i said before you know there's a lot of brands out there i didn't identify with when we first started it so i wanted to bring you know all of those elements of the things that i you know i grew up with and you know i don't identify with uh into you know a new passion that i've 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 you know i've come come to come to love so um you know developing a kit with all of those elements in there um is is what we want to do so yeah yeah so so maybe speaking of developing kit and you know the design process how did you then go from we'd like to do make a kit brand we figured out our design language and our design keys how did you then go about material sourcing manufacturing and then you know getting it out to the people what, what did that process look like yeah long <laughs> it, was, uh, it, it was it was never it was never ending um yeah, no, no, I mean, that's a good question. It was, it was, it was tough. As, um, you know, it was, it was a lot of closed doors. Uh, you know, we reached out to a few uh, manufacturers. Um, obviously Rowan, he, ca- he came from the industry. So he had some, some connections that we were able to tap into. Um, but, you know, some of the, some of the emails that I sent to, to, you know, some of the brands and bear in mind, this is kind of height of COVID as well. When this was all kicking off, so um, you know, a lot, you know, some people weren't getting back to us. Um, some some factories, uh, you know, the minimum order quantity was, uh, yeah, massive uh, that we can you know fulfil as a, as a startup. So, um, but yeah, managed to, to find a, a brilliant factory that um, that uh, you know allowed us to, to do as much customization and you know and develop a kit as as much as as much as we want pretty much um from from the hems on the on the on the bibs um the jersey sleeve length as as Ryan mentioned already before so um you know it's it's definitely a process going back and forth um and, and, and as i said it was during covid so um samples were being sent um you know we we talk um remotely myself and Rowan like we like we're doing now you know um haven't seen Rowan for the, the past five years uh, in the flesh. So, uh, you know, mm-hmm. we've just been working remotely, which has been quite a mad concept, actually. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'd get the kit over because I'm in, I'm in Europe. And, yeah, I'd check it out. We'd, we'd have a video call, look at, look at the, the, you know, whatever's been sent, um, look at the fabrics. Is that working for us, you know, and, and, and drawing on what, what sort of kit we like to wear. Um and just kind of going through that sort of creative process and uh, understanding, uh, you know, what, what what we like basically. So, um, and that takes that, that takes time. You know, we got we got samples uh, of um, finished kit that that weren't right, and I'm so glad that we we made sure that we got samples 
because um, if we'd gone to market <laughs> with those, it, yeah, I would have been very, very unhappy. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just it's just that sort of creative process, you know, getting samples, checking checking what works, um, riding it myself, having uh, having other people ride the kit for us as well, and giving us feedback is is really important. Um, you know, we might like one thing, but you know, someone else might not like another. So um, mm. uh, yeah, that kind of yeah, going through that process that helped us you know develop the develop the kit and and go to market with it um Rowan, maybe a, a follow-up question on that one is yeah what was it like for you personally to say i've worked in the cycling industry before and now i'm going to go and create something myself right like i am understand that design is a very personal thing and designing a kit or starting a company is a very personal thing right how how was it for you saying, right, I've got this block, this is what I feel, and this is the kit I'd like? How, how did you go through that, and how did that feel for you? Yeah, well, I guess um, where I previously worked, I was able to do a lot of kit myself, and I guess a lot of it was for either – so, like, we had, they had a custom range, for example, so, like, a lot of it was for either teams or businesses or even just, like, your random punters on a Saturday that would come to us and be like, Hey, we've got a group of say 20 people. We want to create a little, um, a kit for our, like our crew. So I guess I always like loved doing the, um, the custom side of things where like they'd give you some sort of like idea and you sort of run with it. Um, and you were still sort of tied down by like the name and like their colors and what they eventually wanted. So you always had to like, um provide that sort of stuff but then i guess it was very exciting to have like carte blanche of your own um your own brand and um yeah it was pretty wild actually just to just to riff with ben and collaborate and um do all these things that i guess you've always wanted to do um Mm. it's pretty crazy that like Basically, from the inception of the brand, everything that we've done, we've done online together, whether it's, yeah. you know, Ben would hit me up after work at, say, like 6, 7 p.m. at night. It would be his morning. Then we'd go through and do stuff um, after a day's work or vice versa. So, um, yeah, it was challenging to begin with, but I guess we've, like, felt like we've really got into a groove and it's um, yeah. it's just like the norm now. Mm. And I see any any... text messages as well. (laughs) I'm thinking. I'm thinking of this. Yeah, I don't know what to respond to those. (laughs) (laughs) Is there any future in you two living in the same country? Yeah, well, I've actually got flights to move to. um, Well, I'm going to do a little bit of travel first with my partner um, around Europe, but we've got flights in mid-May to uh, Heathrow, and we're going to um, do a lot of bit of bit of admin before we leave for Europe. But, um, yeah, the idea is to lay our heads in London and, yeah, work there for a couple of years. Um, so, yeah, cool. I'll be seeing Ben in the flesh. We'll be doing a bit more collaborating in real life rather than over over the internet. So that's also very exciting. It sounds like you're going to ready yourself with some, some par- future parve, p- pints and parve. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blood you in some European cobbles. <laughs> uh, so, talking of, I guess, events, we hear that you are sponsoring a Hub Velo 6 a.m. crit. Yeah, so we've got um, actually reached out to uh, the guys at Hub Velo and um, they're holding a, 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 a crit series um, at the end of end of April. Um, into into the first week of May, um, every Saturday. So um, yeah, that that's really exciting. Um, they're pretty keen for us to get on board. Um, yeah, so we're going to be there, and we'll have a stall there. Um, people come come and see the kit, come and see see our, our other items, our bottles, socks, and and hats and things like that. Um, but also, you know, providing you know some support to to. To, to the event you know some some prizes um 
Um, but it's really good. You know, they've got they've got a, a, a dedicated women's race, uh, but they've also got the you know the the, the normal you know cat three, cat four, e one and two. Yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's hopefully not the the only event that we're going to be supporting um, this summer. I want to want to try and sort of get out there and uh, be, you know, be amongst the community and, and and support some of these some of these you know grassroots racing um, that that's happening. So um, yeah, no, looking forward to it. Um, watch this space, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, look, we're, we want to, we want to be out there supporting, supporting the races, supporting the community, um, you know, and, and showing people our kit as well. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's important that, you know, we, we get out there and, and, and get, get amongst it. So was, is, is the event at Hog Hill? Was that the? Yes. Yeah. Redbridge. Yeah. Perfect. I've never been there. I've only done, yeah. I've only done one race in my life and I realized that I was, uh, not fit whatsoever. <laughs> um, I, entered a, uh, I entered a master's race uh, last year um, and okay. I thought, oh, now I'd be fine. Um, rocked up. You're not. They're on the... They're, they're worse they're than the... the oh, man. Yeah, they're I heard that. Rolling. I heard that yeah. master race... I heard master's races are worse than like elite athlete races because um, the people that do master's races have uh, a lot of time and a lot of money so they all turn up on S Works bikes, weigh sixty five kilos, and, and just drill four hundred watts for an hour. Yep. And people turn up yep, like, right. "Oh, I'm I'm relatively fit on my group, but there's some guy, there's some like fifty year old guy with six percent body fat, and just completely wrecks the front." That's five hundred k a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were like wearing aero socks and like, going full gas, and I was just like, "Yeah, I I, I stuck on for like." I don't know three or four laps and uh, yeah. just peeled off um, and yeah, <laughs> just just snuck away. Yeah. Um, so you, it'd be easier just to go into cat four. <laughs> yeah, exa- yeah. I didn't know. I just oh, I just, I just entered this one, but yeah, that was good. It was a good experience, and you know, really, yeah. I, I, you know, I like the vibe down at the racing as well. It's it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just fast quick racing. I just yeah quite it get, yeah it gives me a bit of a buzz to be honest watching it you know i think it's yes yeah, it's, it's crazy and um yeah i'm really excited to to be involved in some of that as well do you have i guess ambitions to ever have a like a ultra race team at all um i wouldn't say we've got ambitions to have a race team um we haven't really thought about it uh, we have guys um kind of wearing our kit uh in some races my friend paddy um, done sort of the uh, uh, the cross season in in alter kit, which was good. Um, he raced summer cross as well in it, which was great. Um, uh, had a guy in uh, in Australia in in Perth racing our kit, um, which is which is really good. So um, this guy Benny is, is yeah he, he got on board, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, good to you know good to get the kit out there. Good to you know see people racing in it. Um, but yeah, no, no plans as yet to have a race team. Um, yeah, mm. just you know, you just want to make some, some some good kit for for people to wear. Yeah, along with your, I guess, cycle wear, you also have some leisure wear um, yep. that I can see you wearing. For any viewers who are watching, Ben's wearing a lovely Ultra T-shirt as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you, uh, what? What is your uh, lifestyle? What items are in your lifestyle range? So look, currently uh, we've got tees, long sleeves, um, yeah, they're, they're kind of the the lifestyle bits that we have. So um, yeah, we have we have plans to do do more. Um, uh, we've got socks. So this, the thing with our socks is um, when we decided to do socks, I wanted to have something that you could wear. And I hate this terminology, but on and off the bike. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Multidisciplined. Multidisciplined. Yeah. yeah. You've done the kit brand bingo, Ben. Well done. You're off to the races. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, But yeah, we want to 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 have something that you could, you know, just just hang out in, you know, but also riding. And um, 
uh, I think we've done that. You know, we 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 chose a tube a tube sock. Um, so I you know I could pick up those socks and you know go to the pub, go go skating, um, or, or jump on the bike. So um, I don't know if you've ever worn uh, cycling socks outside of cycling, but they just they just feel weird. Eh? <laughs> I, just, I I find them yeah they just don't feel right when you're wearing a pair of shorts. I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> yeah, quite. Yeah, I know what you mean. That you, they don't have the softness to them. Yeah, mm. they just don't have the feel of you know that comfiness. And our, our socks are really comfy, aren't they, Cam? <laughs> Cam. <laughs> <laughs> but, Can you hear that? I don't was wasted. <laughs> Is that Taylor Swift? Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris. Ben, ben was asking you for an endorsement, and you were. <laughs> we're very sorry. We're very quiet about the socks. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. that was awkward. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Something's happening here. <laughs> um, sorry. It it turned on Spotify, and it was Megan the Stallion. I'll go. Um, I heard it, but it went. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Ben was actually kind enough to send NJ and I socks and really, really pleased them. I think they're great socks, and I've been wearing them an awful lot, to honestly. I do know what you mean when you were saying that they're multi-use, and, yeah, they are super, super comfortable. What I found with them, and I don't know... I don't know if it's because they're slightly thicker around the uh, the calf space, but they stay up a hell of a lot better than yeah. other socks. You know when you get a pair of socks out after you've washed them and put them on and they feel really good for maybe the first hour, then when you're done and then you've got a Belgian spray tan, they are not staying yeah. up anymore and they're just limp. Yeah, mm, Yours yeah. are really good for staying up. So, yeah, I think making them slightly um slightly thicker around the tops actually really good and they're i'm just looking now they're mainly cotton based as well right so they are going to be breathable even though they're yeah. maybe slightly more uh, ripped on the top right yeah for sure yeah i mean that 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 was kind of the plan you know to have a, a fairly breathable sock but uh and sock, le- sock length is is important right so you know we want to make sure that it's uh it, it stays up, and if it doesn't stay up, you you, you got it all wrong, or <laughs> well, you got to do something <laughs> to keep them up. Yeah, yeah. get that, get that they, hairspray um, like Chris Miller tells us. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, so, if we wanted to buy these socks, or any have any other parts of kit or the the lifestyle wear, where can we where can we find them? Yeah, so autocycling dot com. Um, so that, that's our website or you can jump onto our Instagram uh, auto cycling um, yeah and, and, and yeah check us out um, yeah I'm pretty happy with how how things came out with, with, with the website I've got to thank Rowan for that obviously you know he's uh, not only designed the kit and uh, you know a lot of the aesthetic of the brand you know he's done he's done the website um uh, we had a, a friend of mine uh, who I used to skate with as well uh, do do a lot of our photography. Um, so he done the photography for the, the Quantum launch, which um, came out amazing. Yeah. Um, he had this crazy mm. idea of you know doing this kind of like trailing effect. Um, so um, yeah, that was amazing. So uh, shout out to Dom Marley. He um, he really hit hit out of the park with that one. So. Um, yeah, it kind of feeds in with the with the with the aesthetic of the the kit and you know the rave culture and what we were trying to build around it. So he he yeah hit the nail on the head on that. So that was great. But um, yeah, pretty happy with how things are are going with the with the website. And um, yeah, jump on, have a look, um, fill your boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah with uh you, with the rave culture do either of you you dj at all or are you just partake in the rave i partake i don't know if, brian do you dj no i think i'm in the fortunate position that like 
I'm probably one of the only people in like my friendship group that doesn't. So I can just, <laughs> I always know that like my mates are going to play what I want. So, um, yeah, it's actually quite funny. Like being surrounded by all these people that can DJ and you just like sit back and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just let them do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, maybe, yeah. So Ben, you, uh, you, what was I going to, sorry, <laughs> get, get, right. Uh, right. Uh, I was going to be like, so Ben, was it just drum and bass raves you were going to? Yeah, mainly, yeah, mainly drum and bass. Um, started like, you know, doing it, you know, going to hip hop events and, um, yeah, I was banging to my hip hop for a little bit and then kind of went to drum and bass and yeah, mainly drum and bass, uh, a dubstep as well. Got into, got into that fad for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Didn't we all? For all my sins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Drum and bass. Nice, nice. How about you, Rowan? Are you more drum and bass or are you more on the house side or techno no, side? Drum, uh, I guess drum and bass is probably a bit more, uh, it's a bit more prevalent in the UK. I'm sort of more into like techno. Um, always listen to hip hop like I'll listen to hip hop every single day. But um, yeah, if I want to like go out and party, it's usually techno, um, housey sort of stuff. So Nice, nice. I think with that, we'll head to a break. Welcome back, everybody. Section three, Q&A, getting into the meat of it. Um, now, usually we ask Regent's Park or Richmond Park, but um, seeing as Rowan's actually based in Australia, we've heard some intel pre this call. Um, Rowan, maybe for our um, Australian cadre of listeners, uh, what would you prefer? Uh, for our Australian cadre of listeners, what uh, what would you choose? Are you choosing Beach Road or, or Yarrow Boulevard? Uh, I guess when I first got into cycling, it was probably Beach Road, just um, the speed of things and it was nice and flat, quick, nice view of the beach. But I think if you you want like a ride that's, you know, maybe an hour long, 30Ks, and you want to sort of get it done quickly and also get um, a little bit out of it, Yarra Boulevard is probably the one to go for because it's uh, up and down, um, get a fair bit of climbing in. Um, and it feels like you've actually, you know, been pushed a little bit. So I'd probably say Yarra Boulevard. Fair. And uh, Ben, how about you for London? Are you Regent's Park or Richmond Park? Uh, for me, it's probably Regent's. Um, I just find Richmond a bit of a bit of a nightmare to, to get to. Um, I'm in South London, um, but it's just just a kind of an awkward ride to, to, to Richmond. So I always go Regent's. Um, yeah, and I think you go. I think you can go fast around re- regions. Definitely, um, you definitely yeah. see. You know, the the groups riding there and really, really punching it. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, re- regions is regions is the one. It's the so, one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rowan, uh, this this is sort of a. a I don't even know if there are cobblestones in Australia, but would, do you prefer riding on mountains or cobblestones and also watching mountain and cobblestones? Oh, your second question, watching mountains or cobbles. I don't know. Like they're both as crazy as each other. Like I love seeing, like I was watching the Volta the Catalonia and just seeing like what the Pog was doing was crazy on some of those climbs. Absolutely. But then also watching Paru Bay is just next level, right? It's just like, you don't see that. You say once a year and it's just always amazes you what happens or like <laughs> special, just, the, just the depth they go to the speed, the, like the craziness of the Peloton and, um, yeah, you're right. There's not many cobbles in, in Melbourne at all. So I'd probably say Hills. <laughs> nice. What about you, Bab? Yeah, I think the cobbles. I love watching the cobbles, um, the, the races on the cobbles. You know the classics. Um, it's just mayhem, isn't it? 
you know, it's uh, yeah, it's just carnage. Uh, yeah, I, I always find that quite quite interesting. Uh, the you know the long stage races um, uh, it were really really cool. You know, they're doing like over two two hundred kilometers, aren't they? In, in some of those races, so um, and then it just mm. gets and they're attacking from from the get go, <laughs> uh, which is which is nuts. Um, yeah, for for mountains, yeah, I do. I do like mountains. Um, I go to Calpe a little bit uh, with the family, so you get to ride uh, some of those some of those good climbs that they've got there. You know, nice and steady, good views. Um, yeah, really enjoy that. So um, yeah, I'm a bit scared of cobbles. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to say that. So Pints and Parve, I've never ridden cobbles. So <laughs> I'm a bit worried. Um, it's all right. You'll be fine. So I think it's You're yeah. Fine. I definitely won't, won't be doing pints. Then Parve, it'll be Parve than Pints because if I do Pints before Parve, <laughs> yeah. it might there might be some issues. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, mountains. You know, some of those you know Grand Tours are, are amazing, aren't they, to watch? And you, know, you just yeah. see them un- unfold, and yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. Is the the Calpe holiday? Is it? you want to do some cycling. So you suggest to the family well, that we, we're going to Calpe or is it just, a, just happens to be that your family destination is so a cycling happens, spot. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> that. So it so happens to be um, my wife, her family, yeah, grew up sort of um, you know, going to Calpe on, on holiday. Uh, her grandparents had, a, had an apartment there and um, they obviously got into cycling and uh, it ended up being a really good cycling destination. So I get a couple of days, I go out and get on the bike and yeah, do some of the, you know, call the rats and and some of those climbs. Mm. And yeah, it's really, it's really cool. And um, yeah, it's amazing to see and and to ride as well. Yeah. Do you see that 18 year old set a new record at the Call the Rats? No, but it definitely, uh, he probably went past me. I was, I was wheezing, I was wheezing the whole way up it. (laughs) <laughs> so you can I thought you were doing favourite climb oh shit it, it's me <laughs> oh, so uh, is Cold the Rats your favourite climb Ben or is there another one out there uh, I mean yeah probably in, yeah I don't really have a favourite climb I like going down the down down the climbs, but going up them is is not my favourite thing. <laughs> I don't. I, I I've got this. Um, I've got a route in. I, I, I ride in Kent mainly, and I've yeah. got a route that I, I normally do, and it goes past like Charles Darwin's house and stuff. It's pretty cool. And there's a couple of like punchy climbs, and I think Kent's full of them. You know, real sort of punchy mm. climbs, uh, which is good um, for me anyway. I don't like to spend too long, <laughs> too long riding up a climb. But I like, yeah, definitely like going down them more than going up them. Let's say. Uh, are you going up like the wall and I is it Eid Hill and yeah, Toys yeah. Hill? Like, have I you done did. Hotter as well? Uh, no, I don't think I've done that one. Um, I've done Toys. Um, mm. That was horrible. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, I was. I was going up it like midday heat, and I was just yeah, I was struggling. But yeah, yeah you know, it's part and parcel of of cycling isn't it you've got to go up it to go down it so yeah do you have mm. any favorite descents as you said you prefer those um i, I like descending i hill actually that's really cool um yeah i've got a, i've got a i've got a hold back to be honest because uh yeah with, with skateboarding i always used to always used to come off and i've come off a few times <laughs> taking too many too many risks um last summer i took, took the whole side off um going down a, a, a descent i've always Oh, I've gone down a thousand times, um, but mm. uh, yeah, it's part and parcel of, of the game, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. So Rowan, what kind of climbs are there in Melbourne? Do you have any favourites within Melbourne? There's not a great lot, I guess. For maybe from my house, maybe 80k return would be this one called Mount Pleasant Loop, which is pretty popular, and it's um, yeah, you could probably get it done in two and a half hours, which is um, pretty good for, you know, from Melbourne. Um, other than that, you probably have to, like, drive a car and go somewhere other than, like, yeah. you could do Kin Lake. It's probably 140 k's, probably, you know, 
best part of a day to do it. Um, other than that, there's like very popular ones in the like in the snow ranges. Um, so there's Mount Bula, um, there's Mount Hotham, Falls Creek, which are all pretty tough rides. They're probably like 30k climbs. Um, mm. And yeah, obviously when you get off, it's probably bottom of the mountain. It could be like 30 degrees. You're up there. It could be like 12, you know, it's, um, yeah, those ones are probably, probably my favorite. Um, but coming over to Europe next, well, this year, um, hopefully I'll find some new favorites. (laughs) Are you bringing the bike to Europe? I assume. Oh, get a bike when I come over. Yeah. So it's probably a bit easier. Yeah. Mm. So most important part, maybe this, obviously, um, you know, white bib short chat, maybe this podcast is influencing people more than we saw, <laughs> you know, uh, your countryman Rowan, old Plappy, I saw he was wearing a pair of white bibs a couple of weeks yeah. ago with his leader's jersey that caught a bit of, that caused a bit of a, bit of a stir. Um, Rowan, we'll start with you. Where are you? Um, where are you on the white bib short chat? I've I've, I've heard they they're becoming more pre- prevalent in uh, Australia anyway. Look, I reckon if you can rock it, you do it well. I can go for it. Like, um, it's pretty eye catching. Um, looks pretty crisp. Like I saw, I can't remember what race it was, but it was only like recently with um, Vanderpol rocking the full whites and the the fresh mullet. Oh, yeah. I reckon you know. Yeah, I yeah. Just, like, I can go for it if you can rock it, pull it off. Like, go for it. I wouldn't wear it myself personally oh. because I don't think I can pull it off. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to have you have to have the uh, the game to back it up, I guess. Mm. Conf- a confident person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the main thing. You got to have the you got to have the credentials to back it up. I think. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm I'm backing it. I think it looks cool, but uh, yeah, you definitely got to have the credentials to back it up. Mm. Are we seeing it in the ultra range at any point? Maybe, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Never say never. <laughs> so, when you ever wear tights or leg warmers, do you are you a sock over? The leg warmer or suck under the leg warmer? Ooh, yeah, definitely under. Definitely under. under for sure. Yeah. Under for sure. That's what we want to hear. If you, <laughs> you are in a cold environment and you do need to wear overshoes, I think it's overshoes over the tights, yeah. but always. Yeah. Mm, but, but always socks under. But, yeah. The other thing that really annoys like, me, I don't know if it annoys you guys as much, but it's always uh, glasses over your helmet strap, never under. Always. I thought that was just, yeah. I thought that was just, just a known thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some people don't know that. It's, it really grinds my gears when I see someone that doesn't wear it. <laughs> if the sponsors are giving you the glasses, you got to make sure they're visible for the cameras, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, maybe quite a point to question this one as well. So Melbourne is, you know, seen maybe as that the starter of the proper kind of coffee culture, right? A lot of the drinks that most people are having around the world, your flat white, long black, etc., are mainly originated from the kind of build, the um, Melbourne coffee scene. So start row maybe, you know, with you, uh, when you're going to a coffee shop, what are you ordering? And maybe where would you order that? Would give, maybe give us your coffee shop. Um, well, Melbourne is the home of coffee. Sorry to... <laughs> That's a sweeping you know, statement. <laughs> yeah, look, tell you what, you're not going to find a bad cup of coffee in Melbourne. I was actually no, just in well, and um, in Tokyo and those guys are probably up there with Melbourne. Like you cannot find a bad cup of coffee there as well. They, they're just so onto it. Um, I guess coffee order, just anything filter, anything just black for me. Um, sometimes soy latte if I want like a little sweet treat. Um, 
probably don't have a go-to, to be honest, because you can just go anywhere and find the greatest coffee you want. Um, doesn't matter where you are. You, Yeah. I wouldn't, like, just go to one place and just, um, yeah, always go to them. I'd just go wherever I can find one. That? Uh, yeah, look, for me, I think there's only one there's only one coffee shop in South London. It's Four Boroughs. Um, yeah. Mm. Cool coffee shop. Um, amazing coffee. Uh, we actually had our launch party there. So we actually launched, uh, the kit at Four Boroughs. Tom at Four nice. Boroughs was, um, yeah, willing to let us hold a, hold a little party there. And we had a, an exhibition there for a, a few weeks as well with some of the photography up on the walls and the kit. So, um, but yeah, nice. look, that's, that's for me is, is the best coffee in South London. However, I do, um, on the way home, I do stop at, uh, one called Shotsmith in, in, um, Beckenham. So I'm in South London. Mm-hmm. So if I go out to Kent for a ride, I'll come back and stop, stop there. But, uh, yeah, coffee's not, not, not as good as, uh, it- as four boroughs, but it serves a purpose. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What what coffee are you drinking, Ben? Um, in the mornings, I, I, I tend to do, you know, again, tend to do, have black coffee, um, maybe just an espresso or something or or something like that. Um, and later on in the day, I'll have a, a, an oat, oat flat white. Um, yeah, maybe at the end of the ride, I'll have an oat flat white or something like that. A true um, Londoner's, a true Londoner's cup of coffee, that. Proper, <laughs> proper <laughs> London coffee. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. You got. I, I think uh, cycling and coffee goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Really. Um, yeah. You got to have your you you got to have your pre-ride coffee and your post-ride coffee without a doubt. It's yeah. You know, my uh, <clears throat> my my wife look you know looks on the iPhone to see where I am. At, you know when, I, when when I've gone for a ride and uh, she will always see me at the coffee shop. <laughs> 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 she, she never sees me like riding out in Kent. She just every time she looks, I'm at the coffee shop. <laughs> so not much, not much riding's happening apparently. Uh, it's better than being caught at the pub, isn't it? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do either of you have any? I know we heard some earlier, but do you have any other cycling dislikes at all? It can be anything. It can be as niche as you like. Hmm. Yeah, um, good question. I think for me, it's, I know you've probably heard this a lot, like the eliteness of, of cycling. I think uh, it's probably the, the, the worst thing about it. Um, you know, like I said, I, I enjoy subcultures, but I think it should be open to everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it is awkward when you, you, you go on group rides and you don't know anyone. And certainly if you're new to, mm-hmm. new to the scene, um, I think, you know, not enough people, um, are as welcoming, you know, you kind of, you know, you're, you're riding past, you know, groups and everyone's, everyone's having a look and it's just like, it's, 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 it's that whole eliteness of it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it could be a bit more welcoming. Um, yeah, that's probably my, my pet peeve but you know i'm not here to change the world <laughs> <laughs> anything for you Ryan? uh yeah i guess it's the same just like you know you're not always accepted or there's like you know people might think they're better than you or i don't know yeah just sort of that sort of mentality i guess <clears throat> yeah mm. Do you think that mentality is in like every country? Because I guess you've got it here, there in Australia, and we have it here in England. But do you think, like, you know, like, uh, as in, do you think it's just like maybe like an English speaking problem, or do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I do, I do see it a lot still in Melbourne. Like, you know, right past someone, and like, you're more, you're more, more so checking them out than saying hi. Like, you can easily just put your hand up and give them a gesture or something and say hi, but. It's more so you're just looking to see what the other person's wearing or what yeah. bike they're riding or sort of like judging with your own eyes. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's mm. a bit toxic. <clears throat> yeah, fair. 
Well, we we heard about it maybe at the start of the podcast, the genesis of the meeting of you two, but maybe Rome, we'll start with you actually. Why don't you tell us have you had a time where you've bonked really bad? Kind of your your worst bonk story essentially. Um yeah, I reckon <laughs> uh so I went I went to Vietnam with a mate and we rode from um from Saigon to Hanoi. And um mm-hmm. so we took about a month off work and uh we probably rode, I don't know, hundred Ks a day. It was probably all up, it was probably fifteen fifteen hundred Ks. Um so yeah, probably every second day we rode. And being on a diet of basically just soup and coffee. <laughs> um (laughs) i think you yeah you get to a point where um you you're not really getting enough energy you're not really putting enough energy into um what you're putting out you're sweating heaps because it's It's exciting um just losing so many fluids so yeah there's there's um there's a photo of me like a their version of a 7-eleven just like laid down just drinking these drinks called revives that are just Basically, an <laughs> electrolyte drink. There's a sort of like a Picard yeah. sweat or something, and just like trying to get as many into me just because you're <laughs> losing so many fluids. Um, yeah, that's probably. Did it revive you? They did actually. <laughs> they, they really <laughs> <shut up. laughs> They're great. <clears throat> but yeah, that's probably the worst. Worst I've been. Oh, ben, how about you? Is it uh, is it still the one in when you guys met or? Have- have you, or did you yeah, learn probably, lesson? yeah. Uh, I, but I definitely didn't learn my lesson. But that was probably the worst one. Um, yeah, just <laughs> yeah, just melting into the floor um, after doing two hundred forty mm. kilometers, um, and still kind of fairly new to 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 riding road bikes. Um, yeah, just did not fuel. I don't think I, I don't think I had anything in my pockets. To be fair. Um, Mm. at all apart from water in, in my bottles I didn't even have electrolytes or anything oh, so no. um, <laughs> yeah no it's it pretty hard I'll have to I'll, I'll dig out the photo and I'll send it over to you but I'm my back is yeah. literally <laughs> white <laughs> yeah it's insane but that's probably that. yeah it's probably the worst I actually I think I, I, did, I didn't go to work the next day because I was like oh yeah. my god well, one of those ones one, one of those oh. ones yeah I was just feeling like yeah out of it but um yeah that's, that's definitely definitely the worst one but i mean to be fair it was i think it was it was only around a thousand five hundred meters of climbing um mm. something like that anyway uh for that full trip so it was a it was a fairly it's a fairly flat flat route um but yeah just completely underprepared and underfueled. <laughs> <laughs> oh no we've all been there we've all been there yeah yeah i try yeah. not i try not to get get in that space anymore i don't yeah i don't get out for for really long rides anymore um um with with, with my son um so yeah I kind of get out for my rides are probably in the region of yeah two to three hours now um generally um but yeah, yeah. So when you are going out, what are you, I guess, putting in your back pockets these days? As much as I can these days. I always come, <laughs> I always come home with stuff, you know, just like gels and, and yeah. bars and stuff. And yeah, um, I, yeah, I tend to come home with, with, with stuff still in my pockets, which is, again, I, I, it's one of those things, you know, you, you need to make sure you fuel constantly, right? And uh, I just mm. don't, I just, mm. I just don't do it. I just don't do it enough especially in the winter you know you end up not drinking and not drinking enough in the winter because you you know you're not sweating loads yeah yeah how about you ryan do you have any top tips for what you put in your back pockets on these rides um i'm actually like taking a lot more with me now i've just recently been diagnosed with diabetes type one so oh. um yeah so oh, wow. i'm taking like a lot more food uh insulin Mm. just um yeah basically everything i need to sort of 
survive, I guess. So, um, yeah, whether it's a banana, like everything's fine to eat. It's just, yeah, still got to just watch my levels and yeah, go like that. Nice. Fair. nice. And then uh, I guess the final well, question is on group rides, um, do you have any do's and don'ts of them? Um, um, do's, do's and don'ts. Not really. Um, don't just sit at the back. Which is what I tend to, which is what I tend to do. <laughs> just, it's just going and taking your spot. <laughs> yeah, just, just, <laughs> get pulled, just get pulled along. Um, no, uh, like I said, you know, just yeah, there's there's you know group ride etiquette and stuff, and um, yeah, you should always you know definitely take your turn on the front. Um, but yeah, I think um, on group rides, certainly the, the groups I go on. Um, it's all pretty, pretty chilled and, you know, there's not really, you know, not really too many rules, you know, you just, everyone's just having a, having a good time and, you know, enjoying their ride rather than, you know, sticking to a, a, a you know, a format. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think as chill as it is though, you still just, I, I guess the main thing is just always be alert. Um, yeah. you know, as, as like as much as you can just like get in conversations and just sort of get lost in the moment yeah you've always just got to stay alert and yeah do the right thing i guess good well look kind of brings us to a, to an end to a close um thank you both so much for being on the podcast this week it's been really great getting to know you uh, the people who are listening to this won't realize that actually we spoke for two hours because we ended up just chatting quite a lot so it was it was it was really, really good to getting to know the both of you. So I want to thank you for bearing no, no, with me no. for my internet issues. Hopefully people listening to this also don't get any audio issues from me for another week. Um, <laughs> where can uh, where can people find you? Where can people find Alter Cycling? Yeah, altercycling.com. Uh, that's our website. Or um, Alter Cycling on, on Instagram. So they're the, our main sort of platforms. Fantastic. Well, Ben, Rowan, thank you for being on the podcast and everybody else. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.